Okay, let's move to 3D. The world around us is actually 3D. And I guess how we see, we see objects in 3D. It's not, uh, maybe computers look at images and that's how they see these days using convolutional neural networks. But I believe the way that humans see are a 3D uh, setup. Maybe we are absorbing light in our eyes and then that's gonna be projected into some neurons and in the end, we're gonna make some decisions, make some abstract notation of what we are seeing. And I think a good way to think about it or come up with the data necessary to train our neural networks is rather than using images, is to use data in the form of LIDAR or structure sensors. So LIDAR stands for light detection and ranging. I don't know the details of how it works, but in the end, what you're gonna end up with is gonna be a point cloud of data. So in the end, it's gonna be a set of points. It would be 3D points, X, Y, Z coordinate, or at the same time, you could get the color as the features, or you could get uh, the normal to the surface, etc. And these are gonna be your features. But the problem is that these data are just a bunch of points. It's a set of points. Unlike images or videos, where your data were on a grid, there is no grid here anymore. If you keep permuting your points in the set, it's still the same set. So whatever method that you're gonna design should be permutation invariant. If I take this point and put it here, there shouldn't be any difference, okay? So these are just sets, and we know that sets are permutation invariant. And what are the tasks that we're gonna do? First, what are the applications? You're gonna have applications in self-driving car or robots or indoor navigation, etc. Uh, and so let's start simple and let's say our tasks are classification, but now our input is different. It's just a bunch of points. And our training data is a set of point clouds. So it's a set of set of points. So it's a subset of set of points. That's your training data. And your task would be classification, could be part segmentation, so you're segmenting the parts of the airplane, like its wing, its body, its tail, etc. Or it could be semantic segmentation. So how are we going to approach that? One idea is that you could perhaps put a turn your object into a mesh, basically map that, map your point clouds and try to voxelize it. Voxel is a generalization of your pixels. Now that you have some voxels, you can use convolutional neural networks 3D and use that. And that's actually what people use in the past. But the problem is if you voxelize, there is gonna be a lot of input space around your object. So your mesh is gonna be very sparse. Another idea is to try to work with point clouds right away without voxelizing. So your input is gonna have N points in it and N could change from data set, data point to data point. So the mic could have a different N and your table would have a different n and then each point is gonna have for instance three features x y z coordinates and the method that you want is that you want it to be invariant to permutations of these points and in the end that's the input to the network forget about what's happening here and in the end you want to get k scores and these are going to be your classes so you want to take as input a set of points and you want to output k scores okay perfect the first layer is not that important, but uh, for us, it's not that hard. We saw this idea before in a spatial transformer networks where you took uh, an image, you mapped it through a neural network, and in the end got a 3D, three by three matrix. And these are parameterized. This is gonna be a matrix. And uh, basically you have, let's call this A, you're gonna have A11, A12, A13, etc., And these are gonna be the outputs of your network. And then that's gonna give you a transformation. It's three by three. This one is N by three. You take N by three, multiply it by this matrix. And in the end, you're gonna get N by three. Okay, N by three times three by three is gonna give you an N by three matrix. So this part is, you are just transforming. Maybe there is a better coordinate system and you want to do a transformation. Maybe there is some rotation, maybe there is some translation, and that's what you're gonna do. Now you have a bunch of points, again, n by three. The idea is that you take those points and you can think of these as one by one convolutions. 
you just apply a multi-layer perceptron that takes you from dimension three to 64 to 64. And you just put, push your points one by one after another. One after another, you take your point, push it through the same MLP, so it's shared. And in the end, you're gonna get N by 64 matrix. Now you can do what you did here, but now in 64 dimensions. So you are gonna end up with a 64 by 64 transformation. Again, you are changing your coordinate system, but now in 64 dimensions. Now you do the same thing here. You take your points and you push them one after another through a multi-layer perceptron. These are fully connected networks with 64 hidden layers, 128 and, and 1024. You're gonna end up with, a, with an N by 1024 matrix now. Now you want your method to be permutation invariant. The cool thing about the maximum function is that it's going to give you a permutation invariant. No matter what you do to, you, to these points, if you permute the rows, the maximum is going to be the same. And this is maximum per column. And once you do the maximum, it's going to give you a vector. These are going to be your global features. You can push that through another MLP. And in the end, you're going to get KS scores. And you can use these KS scores for classification. Okay, A mug goes in, a point cloud of mug. And in the end, uh, K scores are going to come out. You push that through a softmax, and then you know the correct label. You're going to use your cross entropy loss, and then you maximize it. That's for classification. How do you do segmentation? For segmentation, we know that we need both local features and global features, similar to images. We needed a global feature to give us an idea of what is in that picture. And then we needed to know the fine details. So you take your global feature from your classification, and then you just expand it. You just copy it row by row. So it's the same vector, 1024, 1024, and it's the same vector that you're copying n times. And the rest of the features for local uh, details, you're going to just copy from this layer. And that's going to give you n by 1084. So it's 1024 plus 64. The rest of it are a bunch of, you can think of the one by one convolutions, or you take your points and you push them through MLPs point, point wise. It's going to change the dimension. You do the same thing one more time. And then in the end, you, per each point, you need M scores. And this method is going to give you that. And then you can use your per point cross entropy loss to do your part segmentation or semantic segmentation. There is a minor detail here that because this matrix is heavily parametrized, it has 64 by 64 parameters, it's a good idea to regularize that. So you want that to be orthogonal or orthonormal because this is identity, okay? That's gonna give you a transformation. This is in addition to whatever cross entropy loss you have, you add this regularization loss. In terms of results, you can have classification results on this data set. You can analyze that data set in your free time. And then this method is extremely simple compared to the previous methods. It is extremely simple and it's extremely successful in terms of overall accuracy. For instance, this method is having uh, 20 views of your environment. This one only has one view. You can do your segmentation. ShapeNet is a good data set for your segmentation in terms of mean intersection over union. The method is doing pretty good overall and per class. It's really not that sensitive. So this is one of those uh, ablation studies that you can do. What happens if you use a lower resolution point cloud? How sensitive is your method to that? So if you have a low resolution input, the method is still working. And here is another qualitative result. That's your point cloud of data. And this is your parse segmentation, sorry, semantic segmentation. Any questions? So is everything clear? Okay, perfect. So it's an extremely simple idea and it's working very good in practice, but it has its own drawbacks. One is that to get these global features, your method is looking globally, unlike convolutions that were looking locally. For instance, each point was looking locally around its neighbors. And then you had multiple layers of that. This one has only one global feature, so it's going to miss the fine grain details. And usually some of those fine grain details are important for your classification. 